Welcome back. A so-called Nazi treasure train has sparked global fascination. Once again, Miranda Kahn has more from our Newsmax newsroom. Miranda? J.D., imagine a train filled with gold and gems buried in a secret location. It sounds like something out of a novel, but as it turns out, this decades-long story may actually be true. Two men, one from Germany, another one from Poland, stirred up this whole phenomenon again after claiming a former Nazi soldier told them the train was buried somewhere underneath a Polish castle right before he passed away. Now they say they know exactly where the train is, but won't confirm its exact location unless they're guaranteed 10% of the treasure. Poland's cultural minister has confirmed an image of a train 100 meters in length, but won't speculate on its cargo. Whether they find it or not remains to be seen, but I think it's a, it's a very interesting mystery. That it is. Yesterday, Poland's defense minister sent an army to search that area, and police blocked it off to prevent curious people from swamping the site. And as you can imagine, J.D., the curiosity surrounding the story is sure to draw even more people to that site. Whether or not it leads them to gold or hidden treasure, well, we'll just have to wait and see how the story ends. J.D., back to you. Thanks, Miranda. Now let's welcome in from Los Angeles, the Associate Dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, Rabbi Abraham Cooper. Rabbi Cooper, it is so good to have you here. And whether or not this, this so-called treasure train exists, doesn't it really give us a chance to pause and think about the atrocities committed against Jews and how it, it has followed the Jewish community and the world now into the 21st century? Yeah, I think obviously the first reaction of people should not be about a, a treasure map, but the fact that this was uh, possibly another economic component of genocide uh, that the Nazis uh, pursued. Uh, we talk about Nazi gold, of course, they expropriated the gold of countries that they uh, captured or took over, obviously the Austrian gold when they took over in 38, uh, other countries like Belgium, etc. But in addition to that, uh, they expropriated everything that a Jewish person had in occupied Europe, eventually also their lives. And it meant gruesome things of, in the death camps, taking out gold fillings. Uh, we're talking possibly into the billions of dollars. Nobody really knows when you add in the art treasures and all the rest. Uh, from my point of view, I think you sort of alluded to it. I don't want... The, uh, the core issue of six million innocent uh, lives that were snuffed out uh, by, by the Nazis to be overwhelmed by you might think is a kind of a treasure hunt. But it does, and it should be, uh, give reason for people to pause, that there was always an, an economic component when it comes to the crime of genocide, and no one did it more efficiently than the Germans. And that is a, a very sick distinction to have uh, in history, Rabbi. Now... Let me talk about the geopolitical implications of what is going on right now. Russia is insisting it needs a cut of this treasure, and uh, it seems as if the very thing we'd like to prevent, this, this gold dust fever or this treasure hunt fever, uh, has captured a lot of people. Are you concerned about the geopolitical repercussions in the here and now? No, I, I'm not so much about the geopolitical repercussions, but you have to say to yourself, wouldn't it have been a, a, a different uh, history if nations had shown as much concern in real time when the Nazi Holocaust took place, as opposed to what's going on now when there may be, um, you know, a few uh, million or even more uh, going into national coffers. In fact, the likelihood of the gold in that train was gold that would belong to the Jewish victims of the Nazi Holocaust. No one's talking about repatriating uh, the money uh, or the gold to where, uh, if it's there, to where it belongs. So I'm not surprised by everyone lining up at the trough, uh, but I think for those of us who were worried about the Holocaust that took place during World War II and the genocides that have happened since, there's always an economic component to those mass murders. And from a pedagogical, educational point of view, that's where really should, we should be, uh, uh, you know, keeping our focus and not like, well, this sounds a lot more interesting than the Geraldo. Uh, let's look behind the wall in Al Capone. We're sure. talking about the lives of innocent people that were systematically 
snuffed out. And when we talk about the, uh, the amount of not only from Jews, but from innocent people across Europe that the Nazis expropriated, that's one of the reasons why they were able to keep the war going that and, long. And sadly, Rabbi, what has passed appears to be prologue with what is going on now, this uh, Iran agreement. 20 seconds with your take. John Kerry says there are enough Senate Democrats to basically keep this agreement in place. Your thoughts? It, it's, a, it's for sure a political victory for the president. There's no question. It's a geopolitical disaster, not just for Israel, for our Arab allies in the region. And ultimately, we're handing over the keys of, of power in the Middle East to a regime that has shown nothing but contempt from the United States and genocidal threats against Israel. We'll have to leave it there. Rabbi Abraham Cooper, we thank you.